Hello and welcome everyone to Dr. Pat's show. So I am a fill-in host today, Laura Hosford, and excited to be with you here today. And today we have a great show coming up. The title of our call today on the show is Answering the Call of the Divine Mother, Become the Change of the New Earth Vibration. And so today I have a special guest with me today, and her name is Donna Fairhurst. And let me take a moment just to introduce you to Donna here with a little bit about her background before we get started on our show today. So Donna is an intuitive, a uh, intuitive life soul coach, a Reiki master, a psychic medium, and an aura chakra angelic intuitive. She is blessed and grateful for the opportunity to share her purpose for being with us today. Her mission is to balance and raise the energetic power and vibration of individual and collective auric and chakra residents to raise consciousness here and now. Embrace her calm principle, zero to clarity, intuitive unity, and the power of surrender. Join us today as Donna is going to share with us in just a few minutes a, a little bit about her journey through her near blind childhood, polio, cancer, three near death experiences, bankruptcy, relationship failures, and finally coming into realizing true love accepting her spiritual gifts, and finding her true purpose in the beautiful essence of being her authentic self. So welcome to the show today, Donna. I'm so excited for you to be here and to share more. I know we had our introductory conversation just a few days ago, and we just had such a beautiful conversation, and your heart is so beautiful. So welcome to Dr. Pat's show. Thank you so much, Laura. It's a great pleasure to be here. Wonderful. So why don't we get started a little bit about uh, with your introduction and wow, 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 what an adventure you've been on, I would say, as uh, in your own beautiful soul journey and unfolding uh, to come into where you are today and to be able to share your beautiful spiritual gifts with us. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. What would you like to share with our listeners today? Well, I'm Closing in on 70. Well, actually, I just turned uh, 69, but it feels it feels late, long, like more. I think I've packed about six lifetimes into this one. I've certainly um, died three times and gone back to the other side. Four, actually, but the first one I don't remember. I've just been told about. So, yeah, I have a real clear, clear knowing of uh, what's on the other side. I've been there. I've talked to the powers that be there, and they've sent me back. So <laughs> here I am. and every time I came back, uh, every, every part of my life was like um, going down this great railroad track and then suddenly hitting a wreck and then going down this great railway track and suddenly hit a wreck. And I would just keep diving back into what I knew to be true from, from very, very young childhood for as long as I could remember. I have seen and talked to spirit, to angels, to guides, to guardians, to my beloved family and friends who passed on. But it was a real tough slog for my very traditional and very different parents. So I shut it down very, very early in life, uh, around 11 or 12, I just completely denied it. And mm -hmm. it would pop up and it would resurface and I'd have visions and dreams and ghosts show up and I would just, done, you know. Take <laughs> and, uh, they, they, they did. They let me flounder. And when I would fall down and then I would ask, they would show up. And um, so let's talk a little bit more about that. So when did um, you say you were floundering? And, and I think that we all have that experience of it's part of the human condition. It's part of the human experience of the struggling between, you know, the duality and sometimes feeling like a yo-yo or, you know, uh, bouncing all around sometimes on our journey. And, you know, it, it's, it's beautiful in the sense that we have been given this beautiful free will to make choices on this planet planet, right? And to, and to see the almost immediate repercussion sometimes of those choices that we learn from so beautifully. So I'd love to, can you share with us a particular experience or what was it like when you, um, 
you know, would talk with your angels and talk with your relatives from the other side. And then when did you begin to really come back in touch with that again? Like, is there a story you could share for our listeners? Well, when I was very, very young, uh, well, one, when I can remember that is most vivid and was one of the times I started to shut down was I was four years old and we had moved from living out in the remote country on a, on a, on a big ranch into a very small town near the city of Calgary, Alberta. And uh, we lived on the edge of town and there were the, all the houses there, every three houses shared a well. So the well was kind of in the center of the middle of the backyard space of all three homes. And you'd have to trek to the well with pails and get water and come back to the house and fill your res reservoir. So my brother was uh, three at the time and he was a runner. He just loved to run everywhere. And you couldn't take your eyes or your hands off of him and he was gone. Mm -hmm. So my father set me on the step on the front road, which was very, very close and had a lot of traffic on it. And he said, sit here with your brother, don't move, hang on to him and don't let go. I'm just gonna go get the water. And he walked away to turn his, his, turned his back and walked away with the pails. And I've got my brother and I'm talking to him and there's a rose bush behind us. And in the rose bush, this beautiful, beautiful face appears. And it's very small, it's very, very small. And so at first I thought it was a, a butterfly or some kind of, of insect. And as I looked forward and got closer, of course, letting go of my brother in the process, I um, leaned in and there was this beautiful little face. And I didn't know if it was a fairy or an angel, but it was just shining and glowing. And it was talking directly to me. And it said, I was going to be okay and not to be afraid of the new place and not to be afraid of the new school. I would be going too soon and that um, my mother uh, who was sick at the time was going to be fine. And I just was so loving this and talking. And then I heard my brother, my father swear, you know, blank, blank, blank in, in French and go running past me and grab my brother just as he hit the road. And he came back and he sat my brother down on the step and he grabbed me and he said, and my father was a very gentle man. And he said, what were you thinking? What were you doing? I told you to hang on to him. And I said, well, the, the angel was in, in, the, in the bush, in, in, in the road. <laughs> I had to talk to her daddy. And he was saying, what are you saying? Don't be talking about those stupid angels again. You're not talking to anyone. You're imagining this. You're lying. And my father wasn't like that, but he was so afraid of my brother at that time being hurt that he said, he picked me up by the arms and he gave my bottom one whack and he said that's for lying and that's for letting go of your brother when I told you to stop and he set me down and my father had never spanked me in my life in fact I was his treasure and we were very very close our whole oh. life alive and since and it it just shook me to my foundation so, so you know it's interesting in that that moment there of, you know, you're sharing this beautiful experience of being able to connect with the angels on the other side of the veil and them coming out and reaching to you and letting you know their presence is there. And yet at the same time, you were having this physical experience of your father's reaction, you know, going into, the, as we do as humans, into immediate fear, you know, for safety for both you and for your younger brother. And so it's kind of like, you know, I think that's, that's just part of our human experience. A lot of us have, you know, from time to time, and maybe we just don't tend to notice the times when our angels are around us, when our angels are holding us, even though we're going through this beautiful physical, you know, uh, experience and soul adventure where sometimes it's not so pleasant. And sometimes we're, you know, we're, we're, we're really experiencing that in, in this uh, negative way sometimes almost. But at the same time, we can just surely see through this beautiful example of how we're still being held, we're still being reminded of our truth that we are held in the arms of, like say, Divine Mother and Divine, and Divine Father's grace and their love at all times, even during our physical incarnation. So, um, 
you know, would you like to share with your listeners, like today, we're just talking about how the Divine Mother has touched our lives and how she's returning now in such a beautiful way. Really, since 2017, she has been coming into the planet, gracing us with her, her new beautiful frequencies of love and grace and healing. And this is what has been building on the planet now and, it, and, and, and really beginning to churn up the, the subconscious, the unconscious within the human shadow and really bringing to light all of these things that are rising up to the surface. Um, and so really, you know, just equating it with my own dark night of the soul, I went through a very similar experience uh, back starting in 2008, where I began my own dark night of the soul and everything started to get churned up within me. It was like coming up to the surface, to the consciousness that I needed to experience but I needed to experience within my physical incarnation. And I think for a lot of us, you know, we may have had similar experiences. And certainly now, I believe we're going through this beautiful global initiation here with Divine Mother returning and, and giving us this wake up call, if you will, to begin to awaken to the fact that we can choose love, we can choose to step into this new beautiful divine frequency of love, you know, and we can make it new choices. And I think this is just so amazing that we we are living during this very special time here on the planet. So um, I know you shared with me, Donna, a beautiful experience that you had. I think it was down in, you said, Guatemala and the church that you went to um, a few years ago. And I'd love for you to, to share that with our listeners, because I think that's a beautiful, another yet yeah, beautiful example of how we can, we never know when we're going to come across the path of you know, and I think we come across the path each and every day. There are opportunities each and every day that we just need to open to receive. And as humans, I think sometimes that's challenging for us to be able to open to receive the love of Divine Mother, to receive the grace, to step out of the suffering and pain and step into uh, a new, the new world, the new earth vibration. Um, but I'd love for you to share that story because it just touched my heart when you shared it with me the other day. Would you would you like to share that with us? <laughs> Absolutely, my, my very great pleasure. Um, in 2008, I went on a almost 10,000 kilometer trek around Mexico, Guatemala, Nicaragua, and Belize. And I was doing it specifically to study and learn and lean into the ancient Mayan and Inca, Aztec, and Toltec indigenous traditions and, and find where they connected with my own spiritual awareness and knowing. And when I was on that trip, um, I went to, I was studying Spanish first for the first six weeks of my journey in a, in a city called Guanajuato, a university city on the Pacific coast of, or mountains of, uh, near the Pacific coast of, of Mexico. And while I was there, I was walking down the street, going to class one day, and uh, literally a, a guide and angel said in my head, go into the travel agency now. You're going to the city of angels. I listened, I stopped and I said, can you repeat that to me? And my daughter and companion were used to these things happening with me. So when they saw that look on my face, they just stopped and waited. And the voice again said, go into the travel agency. And I didn't even know the word, uh, Agencia Viejo at the time. So I, I said, where? And they said the yellow sign, which was like a half a block in front of me. So I went into the yellow sign and I said, I'm here to buy a ticket to the city of angels. I'd like to go for, and then I said in my head, how long? And they said, four days. And I said, four days. And they said, do you want to, to have a tour car? Or do you want to take a bus? And I said, I want to take a bus. Which city of angels do you want to go to? There's more than one. I said, I don't know. So I said, let me check in, turn my back and said, which city? And they said, San Miguel de Allende. So I said, San Miguel de Allende. They said, oh, the most beautiful one. Yes, here we go. They got me a bus. We got on the bus the next that afternoon. Uh, we got to San Miguel. We spent the night. We toured around the city. It was beautiful. And it was the last day. And uh, we were staying in a rooftop where we looked on a cathedral. And every day the bells would ring. And every day it felt like singing. Every day mm -hmm. I heard singing. But I toured all the city and there were many, many churches and of course, many Madonnas, many mothers everywhere you went. And it was on the last day sitting in this little patio that this woman, this very old woman appeared in front of me. And she said, you must go to the church of the mothers now. And I said, okay, is that nearby? 
And she said, just follow. And she disappeared literally into the crowd. So I jumped up. My daughter and my companion were coming out of the restaurant to the patio. And they saw me taking off through the crowd. So they're running after me. I, I follow just the back of the, all I can see is this gray head and this kerchief. I follow it down the street. I'm getting goosebumps now as I talk about it. <laughs> I always do. I just get one gigantic shiver on my body whenever I tell this story. And actually, this is only about the third time I've told this story. So I'm, I'm walking and, and I'm slowing down because the woman has disappeared and I don't know what I'm looking for. So I'm looking for an obvious cathedral or something really churchy looking and there's nothing. And then I look across this little plaza and there's this very squat low building with these big, big double brown doors and there's nothing else like it on the street. So I think that's got to be the church. So I go up. And one side of the door is locked and the other side is just cracked open this much. And I walked in through the crack and the old lady was standing against the wall like she was sweeping the floor. And she said, it's closed, but it's open for you. And then she disappeared again. Mm -hmm. So I turned around and I walked in and there's this very humble, but very beautiful church. There was nothing fancy no gold no cathedral like things it was a church of the people and uh there was nobody in there but myself and my partner and daughter who came in behind us and i kind of walked up the center aisle and in the very front where you'd expect to see you know i don't know a crucifix or god or jesus or something there was this beautiful statue of this crying madonna with tears just streaming down her face and as i sat about three rows back in the corner of the bench. And I'm just looking at her. My heart just filled with so much pain. And it was, it was like my heart was breaking in half. And I'm thinking, well, this should be happy. Why am I feeling so much pain and so much anguish? And then I could hear mothers crying. I could hear women sobbing and sobbing and screaming. And I thought, oh my God. And there was nobody else there. So I knew that this was spirit or God or the mother talking to me. And I, I just held my heart with both my hands and I was crying. Tears were streaming down my face. My whole body was filled with this anguish and pain of the mothers. And mm. I said, what is this? What are you trying to tell me? And she said, you're feeling the pain of the mothers. They bring their sorrows to me. Come mm. forward. So I went forward and now my whole head is, I just feel angels coming in. I, I went forward and on, all at the foot and all over, it looked like this. I thought from the back further that the statue was old and that it had been not repainted or anything because there was stuff stuck all over it and pieces looked like they were missing. But when I went up and I looked close, they were little photographs, little black and white photographs and some colored photographs of children of all ages just taped onto the mother or glued onto the mother or stuck with gum onto the mother and I said what is this and they said bring the children bring the children to us mm -hmm. and all of these children the mothers were coming and they were laying these photos of the children at the feet of the mother and praying for their healing because the children were sick Mm -hmm. And she, and I said, what am I to do with this? She said, you're to know how the mothers feel. And I said, I felt this. My daughter's been ill. And she said, but yes, your daughter's with you. Cause she was, she was right there. I said, she's right here. And she said, yes, you're both here so that you can thank the mother, the father and the son. And I said, I'm not Catholic. And they, said, <laughs> <laughs> they, they just laugh. And now I'm hearing multiple voices just laughing. And she said, it's okay, you're blessed. And I said, well, well thank you. And I, I went to back up and over in an alcove, I saw a statue of Jesus. And I walked over there and it was funny because Jesus wasn't standing or in a niche, he was in a cart. And this cart was just full of flowers and offerings and gifts and photos, 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 photos of all the children that had been healed. Oh, wow, wow, wow. A, a, a dual experience of being guided by, I believe, an angel or a mother to 
to the church to to speak with the mother and then see that the son was there too it, and and it just reaffirmed that we are so connected to to god to source to to mother and fatherhood and that in in my knowing in in my world um they're one they're not divided they're not separate Right, right. I love that. I love that. What a beautiful experience and a beautiful, powerful story there. I just felt my heart. And, you know, what a powerful story about, you know, again, they're both there that even if we are going through an experience that is challenging, we're going through and, you know, we have, of course, as humans, you know, our life is not perfect. We have ups and downs, you know, we have, um, we feel pain every day, and especially for those of us who who open our heart, we feel pain, we feel the emotions, we feel the suffering, and you know all of that. But yet, we also can feel into the gift and the blessing of receiving grace and receiving and lifting up out of that pain and coming back into our beautiful, radiant, whole self, and and coming back into and choosing, choosing that new vibration of the earth, I call it the, the vibration of compassion and divine love and unity consciousness. And this is where we're headed, I think, in this year. And even though it's been a challenging year, um, we can choose it right now. We can choose to move into the new earth right now. And I think that's such a beautiful example and experience that you shared with us, Donna, of how that that whole gift you couldn't have planned it I mean you wouldn't have known with that lady coming up as a stranger or sort of like seeming like a stranger but yet probably you know again angelic the angels were working through her and bringing you to have that very powerful experience of being able to experience the healing and the grace of divine mother that's always there for us whenever I think we we look for her and we can find her throughout our day you know in many different ways um, so what a powerful experience. So we're going to take a break here and go to break and then we're going to come back and we're going to, uh, have, a, um, continue this beautiful conversation here with Donna and share some more stories. So we'll be right back with you in just a moment. Thank you. And welcome back, everyone, to Dr. Pat's show. So I am a fill-in host today, Laura Hosford, and I am here with a special guest today, the beautiful Donna Fairhurst, who is joining us and sharing beautiful stories with us about the grace of Divine Mother. And that's our topic today of perhaps how we you've been graced by a story or an influence or even a miracle through maybe uh, with a relationship with your own mother, a friend, a sister, or someone in your life who is special, who's come in and graced you with the beautiful, loving energy of Divine Mother, who is now, I believe, gracing our planet in miraculous ways that we are going to continue to see roll out this year and into 2021, or at least that that is, that is um, that's what's been shared with me, even though I know sometimes it's hard to see everything going around, but today we're inviting you to begin to see a new picture, a new reality, and to begin to anchor yourself into this new reality that's birthing here on the earth, on the new earth, a reality of we call the fifth dimensional consciousness, or you could call it the unity consciousness, but is a beautiful new consciousness that Divine Mother is leading us to during this turbulent time that we're rebirthing a new world. And so um, Donna has been sharing some beautiful stories with us. And um, Donna, I would love for you to share another uh, just heart-filled, compassionate story here with us that um, of your own experience. Well, as we're on the topic of Divine Mother, um, I'd like to share a story about my mother and an angelic experience uh, at very near the end of her life, too, in fact. So uh, when my mother was dying, she was in the hospital and she was um, suffering from dementia and a, a lot of other things. And it was, it was very trying and traumatic. And she was losing a lot of her ability to speak and to be aware. Some days she would be there and some days she wouldn't. And at that point, my sister and I were taking turns staying in the hospital and actually sleeping in the room with her so that she would never be alone. And one day uh, she woke up and she sat up and which she had not been able to do for some time. And she said, I need to get out of here. 
and I wasn't quite sure, you know, where she was, whether she was with me or she was not with me. And so I said, what are you talking about, mom? And she said, well, I have to get outside. She had a beautiful, beautiful view, looking down into a beautiful tree meadow. And I would wheel her as close to that as I could so she could see outside. But it had been a month since she had been able to see and feel fresh air. And she was bedridden. So I said, well, do you feel up to, to going out? And she said, of course I do. I wouldn't be asking if I did. So I said, okay, mom, let me see if I can arrange that. And I went to the nursing station and asked them if I could take her in one of the wheeled beds. And they said, well, if we can get the angel lift to you, it's going around the, the room, we'll bring her in and get her hoist her up and get her into the movable bed. And you can take her down at least to the lobby. And so I said, okay, that would be great. And I was waiting and waiting and nothing was happening. And the chair was going to the room and I was looking and I was just praying, please, please, please let it stop and come here. Please let it stop and come here. And the nurse stopped and she looked and she looked down the hall away from me. And then she looked at me and she said, are you waiting for this? Are you next? And I said, I think I must be, I'm not sure, but you're asking. So I'm saying yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so she came and we loaded mom up into the bed and tucked her all in and had her partially sitting a little bit so her head was up and I took her down through the lobby and on the way I stopped to get a bacon sandwich and an ice cream which I stuffed in an insulated coffee mug to try to keep clean and I rolled her out onto the yard and there was no place to take her to get to this meadow so I prayed and prayed and said please God please just let me get her to the meadow for just this one last time. And I kind of went around the corner and I saw a garage path going down to a, a, an underground driveway. So I thought, well, this will take me at least there. So I took her into the underground and there was a path out the other side into the meadow. And I went out that door. And of course, then we're not, we're in gravel. We're no longer on concrete. So I'm trudging and pushing to get her into this meadow, but I got her in and we had a beautiful, beautiful hour in the meadow. We saw rabbits and deer and butterflies and birds. And she reminded me that when and if I die, I'll come back as a butterfly, that's your single. And I said, okay, mom, I got it. So it was time to take her back. And I, I hadn't thought about it being so much uphill going back. The, the hill was working with me going down, but it wasn't working with me coming back and I was just saying oh dear god oh dear mother please please all the angels help me and I'm pushing and pushing and out of nowhere this young soldier appears and he's in full uniform and everything and he said you look like you need some help <laughs> I said I I do I've tried to get my mother back into the hospital he said well, my mother taught me never to leave a woman in distress, let alone a mother or two mothers. So he grabbed the back and we pushed and pushed and pushed and we got up and it was really, really hard. And another man who was wheeling a wheelchair stopped and he came over and he helped us get her over the curb and up in to the lobby. And it was quite a job getting her in so I could turn around. And as the man, the other man that was came last to help and he turned around, the soldier was gone. He was nowhere to be seen. And there were big, big windows and it was a small lobby. So I could see everyone and everything in the parking lot from where I was. And the elevator hadn't opened. So he hadn't gone on an elevator. He just disappeared into thin air. And the guy, other guy said, well, where is he? Where did he go? And I said, I don't know, but thank you very much for helping us. He said, I think it must've been an angel sent to help us. It sounds and, like it most definitely. <laughs> but it, it made my mother's day and she never had that moment again. And mm. her dying wish was fulfilled to, to be able to go into that meadow and feel nature again. So I believe that was an, an angelic and an intervention from the divine mother to this mother who needed to be there in nature. So That's that, beautiful, Donna. That's one little story. And then after my mother passed, um, my sister and I had come out into the hall to greet my brother who wasn't there for her passing. And he went in to spend time with her. My sister went off to do paperwork and I wandered out at the end into a garden by the hospice room. And I was sitting at this garden, which was up on a hill looking down a valley. And I was literally communing with, with mom and saying, well, I'm glad you got to go to the meadow. And I hope that you're there and you're seeing this beautiful view and I hope 
when you get used to everything, you know, you can touch base and come back and, and let me know you're there. And all of us kids knew we each had a sign. I don't know what my brother's was, but I knew my, my sister's. And I was sitting there looking and my, I could hear my brother because had quite a heavy step coming down the hall. And then I looked up and this beautiful, beautiful white butterfly was circling around and around and around. And it came down and it landed on my knee. And I just mm -hmm. felt so blessed and so loved and so held by my mother, by the mother. And just then my brother came out and he said, he looked and he was very, very quiet. And then the butterfly came up and he literally, it made a big infinity symbol, flew back and forth like that around our heads. And then I heard a voice say, infinity is infinity. And my brother said, I said, did you hear that? And he said, no, I didn't hear anything, but I guess that means mom made it. So that was... I have so many stories. Of wow. But you know, that's such a powerful story. I can really feel my heart expanding. And when you were doing the wave of the uh, infinity symbol, which is actually a scalar wave And the interesting thing about when you look at the, the science, you know, we talk about the metaphysical and we talk about the science and, you know, the metaphysical and the science is that the scalar way, the infinity symbol that's coming back now into the earth is actually from divine mother, as I understand it. It's actually as we access the right brain, which is the uh, magnetic, the scalar wave waves are magnetic. And like you said, they're infinite. And mm -hmm. so as we learn to move, you know, and we rise up into anchoring now into the new earth the new earth vibration the fifth dimensional earth that we are actually moving back into the magnetic scalar wave frequencies and we are now bringing balance to the left brain by engaging into our right brain which is that of the creative brain the, the mm -hmm. brain that is infinite the infinite creativity portal and as we bring these brain our left and right brain back into balance then we are coming into this whole place of rising up to the unity consciousness of our I am self, of uh -huh. our complete I am self. And I know you teach you teach also about the I am self and and how do you teach others or how do you share that in your work, Donna? Donna? Um, well, I, I I can only call it downloads from from my near death experiences. Um, each of the three times I went over, um, I was given. I was shown some very specific principles and I am was the first one. And that is the power of your word, the power of I, when you say I, that is your antenna, your intention. You are setting the universe on notice that you are radio signaling, sending a scalar wave, sending resonance to them for something which you want to manifest. And when you say am, so if you break this down, I is intention, A is antenna and action. You are to give forth what you need. And M is manifest. It's that simple. Anything that you say that has I am, whatever comes after it, better be in the highest good of all concern, especially mm -hmm. you. Because if you say something that is not in integrity, not in incoherence, and express it as an actual entity as as beingness on the other side they don't see being as separate we are all being we are all one and so when you say i am happy your cheerleaders everybody on the other side's dancing saying oh good she's loving happy today let's bring her more experience of happy. <laughs> you say, i am sad they go oh dear lord she's sad again well, we were hoping that she was going to make a better choice today, but she's choosing sad. So, okay, Marty, you make sure she has a flat tire. When she gets to work, the water cooler is broken. And oh yeah, that customer that she really, really doesn't like to interface with, he's going to be on her back all day. I think that that should about do it. Oh yeah, on the way home, when she goes to pick up the car, it's not going to be ready and she's going to have to rent a car and use her credit card which is overloaded so that's not going to be good I think that's going to make her really really sad and we hope that makes her really really happy oh my so, goodness wow 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 
So the way there, there is a get out of jail free card with this. We are given God given mm-hmm. feelings so that we can make choices and set intentions to manifest from those feelings. All feelings, good, bad, or indifferent are valid and can be validated and they must be expressed and they must be removed from the physical body to for our health, for our mental, our physical, emotional, and spiritual health. We need to get those feelings out. We don't want them lodged inside of us. So one of the things that, that I teach is when you say, I am, and you're not feeling so good about something, you might be angry, you might be sad, you might be feeling guilty or fearful or ashamed, but you say, I'm feeling that. Mm. Because it's you're allowed to feel anything. It's how you express the feeling that sets the waves, the energy, the radio resonance in motion in the universe to bring you more of what you say you want to create. So if you're feeling sad or you're feeling mad or you're feeling angry or fear or guilt or blame or shame, then you feel it and express it as a feeling and then open your heart to the ability to make a conscious heartfelt choice not invested in your ego brain or mind map to Mm -hmm. allow you to choose something that will empower you to shift that feeling. And there's Mm -hmm. all kinds of modalities. One of the other downloads that I was received was a very specific exercise that brings in the masculine and the feminine energies and unites spirit mother and mother earth with mother sky. Well, the, the divine mother in heaven and the divine mother in earth. And it's an exercise and the infant, they, they told me it was infinite unity, that that was the exercise of infinite unity. And it's quite simple. You know, I'd love to show it to, to your viewers too. Yeah, it- please do. That sound that feels very powerful. Anything to help our viewers with a tip or a tool or resource I'm that you can share up. with us today. That would be awesome. I'm going to back up here and hopefully you can see me well enough. Yeah, we can see you. So if you're in a wheel chair or you're on you don't have mobility you can do this simply by putting putting your feet on the ground if you're in a bed and you can't put your feet on the ground all of the chakras are contained in your body and they will all reach out into your art field and your field will touch the ground so you can simply do this in the palm of your hand if you can't physically stand up and do it so don't mm-hmm. worry about that so what you do is you just gently ground yourself center your heart energy mm-hmm your left hand on your heart take your right hand out now vertically in front of you you you're going to start making the infinity symbol as large as you can until you start to feel the tingling in your body and you'll feel it very quickly coming from the crown of your head down to your knees and right down into the earth and you'll feel it coming back up now depending on whether you're left or right handed you're going to feel it on the prominent hand side of your body Now, once you feel it, you take it horizontally from left to right. Mm. You're going to feel the energy going from left to right. And that is marrying and bringing in and partnering the masculine and the feminine energies. And now you take it up again and you bring from soul, crown chakra, down to root chakra, spiritual energy with earth energy and back. And you bring Mm -hmm. it in a circle. And you keep the circle going, and then you spiral it back to your heart. Wow, that was amazing. I can feel that all the way over here, Donna. That was really amazing. Very mm-hmm. powerful, very powerful exercise. And wow, that, love that. An energetic connection to, to all that is. And for those people that are wheelchair-bound or have mobility issues, you can do exactly the same thing on the palm of your hand. So on your, if you're right-handed, you'll do it on your left. And if you're left, you'll do it on your right. But you just do exactly the same thing. The vertical line will be from your middle finger to your wrist. And the horizontal line will be in the middle of your palm from side to side. And you can do exactly the same thing with the palm of your hand. If you don't have that, you could ask someone to draw you a picture of this with a heart in the middle and Mm. a spiral to the center of the heart. But as long as you can just look at the infinity and if you're blind, you can do this in your heart because infinity is already imprinted on you. 
I saw this symbol when I was a child as near blind. So it's, it's very powerful. Wow, I can feel that, you know, and it's kind of like, you know, the rose is the goddess. The symbol of the goddess is the rose. But when you look at the, at the rose, it is that spiraling yes. vortex energy, right? Just yeah. like in our heart, in our sacred heart, in the, in our multidimensional heart, we have layers and layers and layers, and we keep spiraling further and deeper into the layers of our own beautiful heart, which is infinite. Yes. The expression of the heart is infinite. And, you know, which I believe is, is where we're, we're now being led to, you know, is being led to allowing our heart to guide our ego to, you know, which our ego is, is just our individual personality. It's just kind of part of the, the suit that we get to wear and we get to play in while we're here on the earth. And we all have these beautiful, diverse, you know, uh, beautiful personalities that we get to play out. But really, it's the heart in the heart of the mother. And, you know, is being revealed to me each and every day, each and every day, I wake up to looking for a new miracle and looking for the love of the mother and how she's wanting to come into my life and how she's wanting to bring me more love and bring me more happiness and bring me my, more joy. But it's up to me to recognize the opportunity and to choose the opportunity when I can, not that I have to do it perfectly, mm -hmm. but that there is all this beautiful help around me all the time that we can't always see, but we know and we can feel. And if you've shared so beautifully with today, the examples of the butterfly and nature and your sacred journey and pilgrimage that you didn't even know was going to come to you where you could feel the heart of the mother blessing the mothers who uh, were in so much pain around their, their sick children. And, and wow, and that there's always hope. And there's always miracles that are present in each and every day for us. And I just love the exercise. That was just a beautiful, beautiful, and so simple and so simple, right? Uh, yeah. It, it, I mean, one of the, one of the strongest messages I've got, and quite literally, this is the way it said, don't make knowing, don't make source, creator, God, whatever you want to call us. Don't make it rocket science. It's mm. not rocket science. It is, it always was, it is, and it always will be. The important thing is to be now here. If you're now here, you, you're, you're present, you're attached, you're functioning, you're part of everything that is. If you're not now here, you're nowhere. I said, well, now here and nowhere, like sometimes I feel like I'm nowhere. Well, then you're either focused on the future or you're living in the past mm. because the only thing that is important is to be here now making choices from reality that what is right in front of you right now to deal with yes go back and learn your history learn the the laws learn the spiritual mechanisms for creation but above all when you know that let it go and live it. Mm. Let it go and live it. Be present here now. Or be nowhere. It's a choice. Mm. So to me, um, my experience of, of heaven and earth and how it relates to humanity was, was, was very, very clear that hell is what we create with our ideals and our greed and our shame and our blame and our guilt and our fear and above all judgment and i was shown that very clearly when we come in we are given this beautiful big heart map and if you ask a child a child doesn't know what they don't know a child just knows what is a child lives as they grow through where they are right now it's we their teachers here on earth that teach them not to know what they feel, not to know what they hear, what they see, what they think through their heart. And we, we do a disservice to the children. We need to teach them to live from their heart, to live from their heart center 
and, and to be a vehicle for love and non-judgment. When I went to the other side, I waited for that, you know, okay, now I'm going to see all the terrible things that I ever did, <laughs> ever happened to me. And that was not what I was shown. Mm. What I was shown were the feelings of the people, the feelings. I got to feel the feelings of the people that I had wounded. I got to feel the feelings of the results of the poor choices that I made, but I was not judged. There was no Armageddon. There was no judgment. And, right. and I, there, I was told, we don't judge. That is a human construction. Yeah, so agree with you. And I love what you were saying about, you know, the children. And it's the innocence that I believe we're being guided back to live from the innocence of our heart and to be in the now moment and to learn to trust, to learn to trust God got us, has our back, and is, is, is always going to take care of our needs and everything is we just allow it, is we just allow it by being in the moment and not moving into the past or not moving into the future, but learning and reconditioning our, you know, it, it is about, I think, retraining ourselves, you know, because like you said, our society has been rather imbalanced with trying to live out of the left brain. And we've had many thousands of years in that experience. Now that experience is changing where we are now beginning to bring back in the mother, the right brain, the scalar way, the infinity we're beginning to bring. So we can live in this balance, you know, from the left and right brain coming together in wholeness, merging together and living in our true original state that I like to call from our divine blueprint, our angelic self. And so, you know, each and every day I, um, I meet children who are my teachers who have beautiful radiant hearts. Um, you know, children on the spectrum to me are, have some of the most amazing energy and amazing hearts and they, they can't maybe speak, but you can sure feel their energy when you're in their presence, the loving space of, of no judgment. It's, it's so powerful. So we're, we're almost at the end of our show today, Donna, but I'd love for you to share with our listeners a little bit more about how they can get in touch with you or what you might have for them or something you'd like to share with them if they'd like to work with you or how do they contact you or anything you want to share. Well, I'm, I'm a life and a soul coach and, and everything else in, in my life is a tool that I use to empower that. I came into this um, late in life through a long, long journey of learning. And uh, it is my passion and my true mission. I, I work with uh, professional women and a very few brave men who really want to raise their energy, their coherence. They want to create, they want to go from zero to clarity. And that's what I teach. I run a zero to clarity coaching program, six and 12 months. I'm very, very exciting. I'm going to be starting a group program uh, in 2021. But up until that time, I'm rebranding and redoing my website. So right now, you can find me on uh, Soulful, S-O-U-L-F-U-L-L, -L -L, three, three words, soulfulsolutions.ca, and uh, also zero, Z-E-R-O, the number two, clarity, C-L-A-R-I-T-Y, dot C-A. And Beautiful. Right the upcoming within a few weeks is going to be donnafairhurst.com okay way. beautiful thank you donna and thank you for being with us today and uh, for all your beautiful sharing and stories and knowledge you've shared with us and your beautiful processes and thank you everyone for joining us today on dr pat's beautiful show uh, we send you lots of love and blessings and namaste until we meet again have a beautiful day thank you everyone <laughs>